Hi, this is Megan Cole, Teen Services Coordinator from the Powell River Public Library. I am coming to you today from my office, uh, my home office, now that the library is closed. Many of us are working from home now that we are not in the library space. And something I've decided to do through the closure is to talk books with you. Um, something we do together at the library over the service desk, maybe you've knocked on my office door, um, but we, I love to talk about books. Uh, it's one of the things I love most about working at the library. It's one of the things that drew me to working at the library, and it's something that is connecting me to so many of you in the space. So even though we can't see each other over the desk or in the stacks, I thought that we could still talk books. So I'm going to talk about the books that I love through the magic of the internet, and I invite you to do the same. Uh, make a short video with your iPhone, um, or even just like take a picture of the cover of the book you're reading right now and share a little blurb about why you enjoy it so much. But the book I decided I would talk about today is a dear favorite. Um, it's not an old book. It's not one of those like childhood favorites. It uh, was published probably, I would believe, in the last five years. I'm now flipping to the cover. The last three years. Um, it is... Bird's Art Life by Kyle McClear. Uh, many of you will not be surprised this is a favorite. I talk about it all the time. I talk about it in my master's class. I talk about it in workshops. I talk about it with other writers. Um, it is a favorite of mine and has been since the minute I read it. It was one of those books that actually, as I started getting page by page closer to the last uh, bit of it, I actually started getting sad, like, oh my gosh, this will be over and I won't be able to enjoy it anymore. And I felt a little bit of heartbreak. So what I did was I returned my library copy and swiftly bought my own copy because I knew I would need to read it over and over again. And I have, and it's become one that I often recommend to other writers, um, other readers. It's just such a beautiful book. Um, if you haven't heard of it, it is a memoir. It also deals with kind of um, creativity and inspiration. Kyle McClear is a writer, obviously. She's also an artist. Uh, she has written and illustrated children's books. Um, if you're a parent, you might be familiar with her books uh, Spork and Virginia Woolf, The Fog. Um, one that I really love called The Lists. But yeah, she's got a host of fantastic children's books, and this is her second book for adults. And the story is uh, happens in a year. She embarks on this kind of quest, maybe it's a self-finding mission, to uh, kind of deal with what's happening with her parents as they age. Um, there's some concern about maybe death in the family, and so she has kind of lost her creative mojo, shall we say, and uh, goes looking for it alongside an urban bird watcher. So the book goes um, from, I'm now flipping again, because I'm <laughs> trying to remind myself where it starts. It starts in December, and uh, she goes for a whole year with this urban bird watcher through Toronto, watching the birds that come and go through the urban landscape. But the really beautiful part is that she weaves in all these moments from her own life, uh, her kind of creative experiences, experiences with her children. And uh, one of the chapters that I love is uh, the June-July chapter titled Lulls. And the reason I love this chapter so much is because I think it deals with something that so many of us face, especially creative folks. Um, when we lose our inspiration, when we can't think of another great idea, we worry, will there be another great idea? And so lulls are something we fear. And she instead kind of meditates on this idea of the lull. Is it something we should fear? Is it actually quite productive? We're okay to have these fallow periods as creative people. Um, and I just think it's so beautiful because it is something I think about often, and I know other creative people, writers, and um, even artists, and so on, think about, but it is such a beautiful chapter, and I thought I'd actually read a little bit from it for you today. Um, and as I said, this comes from Lulz. It's uh, about midway through the book, 
and this part comes about midway through the chapter. A lull can be soothing, tranquilizing, and even restorative. It can be a time to retune and replenish. A lull can be a a lull can suggest a state of peaceful hovering, a prolonged mental dream, a weightless interval. One can be lulled to sleep or lulled into a trance. Yet for many artists I know, the word lull signifies the exact opposite. The absence, the flaw, the incompleteness, something lethal and dangerous, a source of fear and melancholia. There are layered reasons for this. Number one, superstition. A common and reasonable anxiety among artists is that creativity will flatline without constant practice. Confidence will wane, muscles will grow flaccid, what starts off as a lull will become a rut. The muse will flee. Number two, capitalism. We live in a culture of high performance and competitiveness. Even artists, perennial outlanders who appear to have more freedom from conventional market expectations than most, feel they must maximize productivity and extract the most out of every day. Even those who live outside the city in the lulling countryside feel time pressured and the relentless demand to perform and stay connected. Even the notion of betterment, which seems benign, can wield as a baton of self-discipline. Number three existential fear. We live in a culture where even the most banal and shallow gesture is considered better than no gesture. Many of us would rather engage in mindless functioning than face the prospect of being inactive. Being an artist is not only financially precarious, but existentially wonky. Most writers will tell you they are writers only insofar as they are writing. When the writing stops, the trouble begins. Self-recrimination, fears of disappearance, of irrelevance, of the loss of one's, self, of one's best self, etc. Describing the existential difficulty of settling into blankness, that taunting vacancy, writer Kate Zambrano notes, I know I should leave the house when I am stuck, stalling, but I feel this clawing inside. Like if I do not write well, I do not deserve the day. I tend to slink into a sloth-like demi-existence, watching things behind a screen. Number four, therapeutic habit. For those who find work makes them feel light and happy, wards off the doldrums, a lull can mean setting in of heaviness and despair. In some, in some cases, hard work is an alibi for escape, a means of sh shirking life and any mess that may be waiting for you once the busyness stops. Working all the time, writes Carl of Knosgaard, is also a way to simplify life, to parry its demands, especially the demand to be happy. So that is from Kyle McClear's Birds Art Life. I will share uh, links as to how you can find this while the library is closed. We still have all of our digital resources available. Um, and I will be back soon with another book to talk about. Uh, this idea is partially thanks to David Parkinson, my fellow library coworker, who said to me the other day that he always thought it would be great to have a book club where we just talk about the books we're reading. It doesn't have to be the same book, but just whatever we're reading. So I invite you to do the same. Please share with me what you're reading at home right now. Um, if you're like me, I often find comfort in the pages of books. And so these are, this is a time when I'll be turning to the books I love. See you soon and be well.